Thanks for watching the screencast. The objective of the screencast is learners will be able to write the equation of a linear function given a point on the line and its slope. So here's an example of the problem that we're going to use this screencast to try to solve. Uh, it says write the equation of the linear function with a slope of 3 that contains the point negative 2, negative 5. Now one way to solve this problem might be given a graph to make a picture of what we know. One thing I know is that the point negative 2, negative 5 has to be a point on the graph. The point negative 2, negative 5 would have an x coordinate of negative 2 and a y coordinate of negative 5 and it would be right there. So the point we know is actually this one right here. Another thing we know is that the slope is 3. And if the slope is 3, I need a rise over run of something like 3 over 1. Or in other words, what I know is that from this point, I should be able to go up 3 and right 1 and get other points on the line as well. So if I, from the point negative 2, negative 5, go up 3 and right 1, I'd be at negative 1, negative 2. If I did that again, I would be at 0, 1, and I would be at 1, 4, and so forth. So the line itself looks something like this. A little bit straighter than that, actually, but you get the idea. And what might be helpful to solve this problem would be to think about the slope-intercept form that we've dealt with previously. y equals mx plus b where n is the slope. You know, we already know n, don't we? And b, b is the y-intercept. Where would that line cross the y-axis at? Oh, right there at 1. So if I know m and b, I could write the line equation by replacing those values in this form. I could write y equals 3x plus 1. Now that's a perfectly fine way to solve this problem, but it was really convenient that we had the graph there made for us. So what we want to show you in the screencast is another approach you could use to solve this problem. So what we're going to look at here is what's called the point-slope form of the line. The point-slope form of a line equation is given by this expression here, y minus, this is read as y sub 1, that one is a subscript, it's not like a, any kind of exponent deal. Uh, equal, uh, y minus y sub 1 equals m times the quantity x minus x sub 1. And this equation for a line works if m is the slope of the line, and the point x sub 1, y sub 1 is any point on the graph of the line. So essentially, if you know a point on the line equation, or if you know a point on the graph of the line, you could plug the x-coordinate of the point you know here. You could plug in the y-coordinate of the point you know here, and then you could have a line equation if you know the slope. So the example here is a line, a linear function, that has the point 3, 1 on it. And of course it has a bunch of other points as well. But what I see here is to make it fit this form of the equation, if I were going to try to write a line equation, I could say, well, Here's my x sub 1, so that would go here. Here's my y sub 1. You can think of x sub 1 and y sub 1 as just one of the points on the line. Uh, what is the slope of this line? If I start at this point and go to maybe this point, I would say I need to go maybe up 2 and right 3. Up 2 and right 3 makes the slope rise over run 2 over 3. So I could use this form of the line equation to write an equation of the line y minus the y coordinate there, which is 1, equals the slope. The slope is 2 thirds times the quantity x minus, and I want the x-coordinate of the point I know, and that's 3. And this is 
uh, one equation that describes the linear function shown here on the graph. Okay, so what we want to do here is we want to practice using that point slope form, y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. We want to practice using that to write the line equation. So let's work a couple of examples here. Look at the one here on the left. It says write the equation of the linear function with a slope of 3 that contains the point negative 2, negative 5. So I'm going to look at this point slope form, and I'm going to say I know what m is. m is 3. The slope is 3. I know that x1 is negative 2. I know that y sub 1 is negative 5. So these two values here should be the x and y from the point that we know. Let's plug them in. So what we've got is we've got y minus y sub 1, which is negative 5. Now it's important that you notice that you need y minus whatever that y coordinate is. Even if that y coordinate is negative, you need to put that negative sign in there as well. And that's going to equal the slope 3 times x minus, and now I need the negative 2. Now what's left for you to do here is we'd really like you to try to get y by itself here. We'd like to have the answer written in slope intercept form. Um, I see a couple of double negatives that I want to deal with. I want to replace y minus a negative 5 with y plus 5. That equals 3 times. Uh, this is also x plus 2, isn't it? And there's really only a couple things left to do to get y by itself here. Uh, I really want you to think about using the distributive property here on 3 times the quantity x plus 2. 3 times x plus 2 is really 3x plus 6, isn't it? So we've got y plus 5 equals 3x plus 6. And now my last step is going to be to take this positive 5 here and make it a negative 5 on the other side. So what I'll have for my answer is y equals, you know that negative 5 will, will be a like term with the positive 6. It won't affect the x term at all. We'll get y equals 3x and 6 minus 5 is positive 1. We got y equals 3x plus 1. Let's look at this example here. It says write the equation of the linear function with a slope of negative one-third. In other words, the slope m is negative one-third. And it should contain the point 6, negative 3. I need an x sub 1 of 6. I need a y sub 1 of negative 3. So let me plug in what we know into the point-slope form of the line. I've got y. You know I would be writing minus negative 3 here. But I already saw in the last example that whenever I get y minus a negative, it's going to be y plus that thing. Let's just write this as y plus 3. And if that's a bridge too far for you, don't be afraid to go ahead and write it as y minus the negative number first. And that equals the slope, negative 1 third, times the quantity x minus 6. Now my next move here is to distribute this slope, this negative one-third, to both terms here. And this could be a little intimidating, multiplying this number, this fraction, by this integer here. So let's do everything up to that step, and I'll remind you of something that I know that we've talked about in class before. We've got y plus 3 equals, you know negative one-third x is just negative one-third x. Okay? Now, to do a fraction times an integer, this always, always works. You can always do top times number divided by bottom. And if you've got a negative here, I would encourage you to make it part of the top. So let's think about top times number divided by bottom. Negative 1 times negative 6 is positive 6. Positive 6 divided by 3 is positive 2. Okay? So just one more time. Anytime you've got a fraction times an integer, it's always top times number divided by bottom. What's my last move here? Well, I need to take this positive 3 and make it a minus 3 on the other side. So what I have is y equals negative 1 third x. 
Uh, 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Y equals negative 1 third X minus 1. We've come to the time in the video, you know what to do here. Pause it, try these two items, and when you think you got it worked out, hit play to get some feedback. We want to write the equation of the linear function with a slope of two-fifths, or in other words, m should be two-fifths. And then we also want the point negative five, four. We want an x sub one of negative five and a y sub one of four. So here we go, let's plug it in. We need y minus, uh, we need y sub one, we need four equals, now I need two-fifths times the quantity x minus negative 5, which I'm going to go ahead and write as plus 5. And then what I need to do is I need to take my slope, I need to distribute it, so I need y minus 4 equals, two-fifths times x is just two-fifths x, Two-fifths times a positive five. Here we go. It's top times number divided by bottom. Two times five is ten. Ten divided by five takes me back to two. It's plus two. What's my final move? Well, this negative four should be a plus four here. So what I really have is y equals two-fifths x plus six. For the other example, we need y minus, what's the y coordinate of the line? It's zero. Yeah. Equals the slope, negative four, times the quantity x minus two. Now I need to distribute the negative four. Make sure you get the negative sign when you distribute. So what you've really got is y minus zero equals negative 4x. Be careful, this is positive 8, isn't it? And I guess I would say my last move would be to take this negative 0 and add 0 to both sides, but that seems kind of weird because that's not changing the equation any. In reality, it's simply just that whatever y is, y minus 0 is still y. So you just had your answer, didn't you? y equals negative 4x plus 8. It's time to practice this on your own now. Thanks for watching.